And there's a lot more to you than meets the eye. But it won't be released unless it has to. And so you're not going to even figure out what it is until you put yourself in peril. Now, part of that you might think, like, imagine that you're, you're an introvert and you're socially awkward and you're highly neurotic, so you feel a lot of anxiety and depression. You don't like going to parties. And that's because the horrible tyrant lives at parties and always glaring at you and judging you and telling you how useless and insufficient you are. And so you go there and you don't even look at people because you know that if you did look at them, you'd just see the face of the judgmental tyrant, which, by the way, you wouldn't if you actually looked at them, but you won't because you avoid. And so you're going to go there and you're going to put yourself in this terrible situation, and if you're lucky and you're a bit awake, then you're going to incorporate all sorts of information from the external world that will help you develop your social skills and make you more sophisticated. And even if that doesn't happen, you're going to learn that you can tolerate your own fear. And you might say, well, what's better? To not be afraid or to know that you can handle being afraid? And obviously to not be afraid. But give that up, because that ain't happening. <laughs> so the, the next best thing and the realistic thing is to know that you're the master of your own fear. And so a lot of what we're going to talk about in relationship to classical theories of personality is exactly that. It's not that the world isn't terrible. <coughs> it's that the world is terrible. But you're a lot stronger than you think. And the way you... Okay, and so part of that is the strength that you gather is partly the information that you gather when you go somewhere that you're not good at, you know, so you're establishing new skills like you have at university. But there's another part that's interesting that's related to the little video that I showed you at the beginning. DNA turns out to be a very complex structure. And so if I put you in situation A, then DNA codes certain kinds of proteins that help make up the way that your mind is and the way it works. But if I take you and I put you in another situation, completely different genes turn on. And so what that means is that you have a biological repository of potential use lying dormant at the, at, the, like at the highest resolution level of your molecular structure. And then if you push yourself in all sorts of different directions and you find different things to pursue and test yourself against, then you're going to turn on parts of yourself that aren't currently on. And God only knows what you'd be like if you turned yourself completely on. And maybe I could use a better metaphor. <laughs> You know, if there's a initiation archetype, which I kind of just described to you, which is, you can do this to yourself, I'll tell, I'll tell you how. And this is a good way to live. It beats the alternative anyway, so, which is like the definition of a good way to live. So imagine you're trying to pursue something, so you've got a goal, that's a good thing, you've got to have a goal. And you don't want to hold on to that too tightly, because you might be wrong. So you've got to be willing to let that go and have a different goal, but you need a goal. And then, you know, while you're pursuing the goal, you're going to find out that there's some obstacles in your path, obviously. And maybe some of those obstacles are of a frightening type, or maybe they're even of a disgusting type. You might say, I don't want to turn into that kind of person. So those of you who are sort of socialist, utopian, left-wingers might think that way about business people. It's like, I would, I would recommend that you get over it as rapidly as possible. So, anyways, you might think, there's no way I'm going to act that way. So you sort of put it off limits. Say, or maybe you're afraid to do what you need to do next. Well, here's a rule. Don't avoid doing things because they make you feel negative emotion if you have to do those things in order to pursue your goals. In fact, you should do exactly the opposite. So let's say you're pursuing a goal and you find that you're afraid about something and so you're avoiding it. The first thing you should think is, Aha! Look! I'm afraid of something and I'm avoiding it. Dragon. Treasure. Exactly there. And that's exactly right. It's precisely right. If you're, if you're afraid of the thing, then what that means is that you're not developed enough to handle it. And you need to be. So you should think about that as a discovery, like a positive discovery. You found out where you have a weakness, and you're now able to address it. So, you know, if you're an introvert and you think, it's Friday night, I could go to this party, but, you know, I really don't want to, then you think, oh, that means I should go. And that's exactly right, because... Because you already know how to do the things that you know how to do. And it's the things that you don't know how to do that bother you and oppress you. And of course those things are going to be difficult to learn about. But you need to learn about them because you need to get yourself all switched on. How's that? Switched on. <laughs> because then you'll be able to tolerate the fact that life is fundamentally suffering. And so you don't 
The world doesn't get safer as you develop. In fact, quite the contrary. You just get more competent. And that's better anyways, because it's conceivable that you don't want safety anyways. You probably want adventure. You probably want to be compelled. You, you probably want to be engaged. You know, if you want security, you might as well be dead. Well, because nothing's happening then, and no, there's no danger left. To be alive is to be contending with the, with the world. And you want to be the best at that that you can possibly be. And that's partly what we're going to learn about as we go through the entire course, but certainly the elements that have to do with clinical psychology. Because all of them circulate around this fundamental theme. They have to, because it's the fundamental story of mankind. And we want to know what that fundamental story is, because you're all human, and you need to know the story. When things fall apart, it's not like you just fall apart psychologically. It's not just a psychological condition. You know, if someone's betrayed you deeply, that might be because you're naive and unready, and maybe that's a psychological element. Maybe you're just young and, you know, you don't know better, and you couldn't. But there's also the real fact of the problem that you have, in fact, been betrayed, and now you don't know what to do. So there's reality in it as well as just what's psychological. And so, one of the things that you might, one of the ways that you might construe personality theories that have to deal with a description of the way people are and a description of how they might move towards mental health is that there are maps that tell you how to, there are maps of that landscape that tell you how to orient yourself so that you can succeed. And even better, and this is a Piagetian idea, it's not only so that you can succeed. It's so that you can succeed in a way that your family succeeds, so that they can succeed in a way that society succeeds, so that everything works better at the same time. And that's really success. You know, and that's like, you're winning a game that everyone wants to play. Well, what a deal. You get to move forward and everyone else gets to enjoy it. Well, that's a good definition of success. It's an archetypal definition of success, actually, because if you succeed properly, then your success benefits everyone else. So, hard to imagine that there could be anything particularly wrong with that. And so, in this unbelievably protected environment, you can think, oh, well, we should go easy on nature because isn't it so beautiful? It's like, yeah, well, yes and no. And it's not all beauty. It's certainly not because nature will eventually kill you. So, and it, even if it doesn't, well, it's going to kill you. It will also make you sick. It will also make everyone that you know sick. And it will kill all of them, too. So it's not so such a bad thing to have a little bit of empathy for human beings, given that we have to contend with that. And, you know, if we're destroying everything, which we're not, it's also returning the favor. So, all right, so there's the substrata. At the bottom of things, there's this terrible monster. But it hoards gold, and so encountering it, defeating it, challenging it, facing it, can be unbelievably productive. And that's a symbol of the absolute unknown. That's where you go when things fall apart. You don't know where you are, so where are you? You're where you don't know what things are, and that's a place. And what's interesting about it is that there are rules to act in that place. And that's what's so helpful, because, you know, if you're in a place and you don't know what to do, and that's that, you're done. But if there's a pattern to what you can do in a circumstance like that, then you land on your feet, and you're ready to contend, and maybe the trip down into the underworld is something you can undertake on your own accord, and you can come back with the treasure instead of, instead of ending up as dragon food, or worse. And then when you're conceptualizing your relationship to other people, well, well, let's say to society, first of all, it's like, yeah, obviously you face a tyrant. Of course you do. But that isn't all you face, and you need to be grateful for what you've been given by your culture. And you actually have to understand what that culture is, because it's you. And if, if you don't rescue that part of you and that part of the culture, then everything gets dead and stale and tyrannical, and everything goes immediately to hell. And that's not a good thing. And then with regards to nature, well, you obviously have to appreciate the positive element of nature, and you have to enter into a relationship with it. But you don't bloody well want to forget that, like... Things are out to get you. And, you know, you have to be intelligent and, and ready and awake so that you can prevail against that. And you have to be grateful for what you've been offered by other people and by the tremendous efforts of all of human culture across all of time that's put you in a position where you're so unbelievably privileged and, and, and have so many opportunities at your, at your disposal. Well, so that's kind of the archetypal story of human beings. 
We always face nature. And it's always on our side. We always face our culture. It's always on our side. And we always have ourselves and those things that are arrayed against us, internally, externally. And that's the, you could say, that's the existential world. It's the world of drama. And the things that are really compelling to you as means of communicating, use those categories to provide you with information. Because what, what you're trying to figure out is if that's the landscape that makes up your being, so that's a phenomenological idea, how is it that you weave your way through it? 